What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at the 2019 AP Calc BC free response question number six. So let's get started. For part A, we want to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero. So for this question, we just have to know how to set this up. We have the third degree Taylor polynomial, which we'll call p sub three of x, is equal to, and the setup is we have f of zero, because we're using the function f about x equals zero, plus f prime of zero, times x to the first over one factorial, which simplifies to just what we have here. And then next we would have plus f double prime of zero times x to the second over two factorial. And just be careful, some people will think third degree means we're gonna have three terms, but that just means the highest power of x we're gonna use is x to the third. So we have to go out one more. We're gonna go out to f triple prime of zero times x to the third over three factorial. And from here, we need to solve for the values of f, f prime, f double, and f triple. And the first two values we're going to get right from the graph. f of 0, if we have a graph of f, is just the y value when x is equal to 0. And the y value at x equals 0 is equal to 3. So we got our first value. Now f prime of 0, we're going to find by using the information that they gave us the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 0. And if you look, the slope of this line, you just count the rise over the run, and the slope is negative two because we're going down two units to the right one unit to get to the next point. So that gives us the first two values. And now for the last two values that we need, f double prime of zero, we just get from the table. n equals two corresponds to the second derivative, and the second derivative at zero is equal to three. And then the last value that we need is f triple prime of zero which corresponds to an n value of three, and the third derivative at zero is negative 23 over two. So from here, what we need to do is just plug all of this in to this polynomial here, and we'll have our solution. So we have the third degree Taylor polynomial is equal to f of zero was equal to three, plus we have f prime of zero is negative two, which you know what, I'll just backspace and I'll just make it a minus two times x here. And then next I have plus, 3 over 2, because f double prime of 0 is 3. 2 factorial is just 2, so we have 3 over 2 x squared. And now for this last piece here, we have minus 23 over 2. And then this is being divided by 3 factorial, which is 6. And this is times x to the third. So in the last line here, we'll just simplify this. So our final answer to part A, we have our third degree Taylor polynomial is equal to 3 minus 2x plus 3 halves x squared. And if I do negative 23 over 2 divided by 6, that's going to give me negative 23 over 12. So I got minus 23 over 12 x to the third power. So here's our solution to part A. For part B, the first thing we want to do is write the first three non-zero terms of the McLaurin series for e to the x. So this part here, this is just straight memorization. You can derive the series for e to the x, but if you just know this one offhand, this is gonna make your life a lot easier for the AP test. So you'd have one plus x to the first over one factorial plus x to the second over two factorial, and two factorial is just equal to two. So here's our first three terms here. If you wanna write this with a one half x squared, you can, but this is fine. Now the next thing we need to do is write a second degree Taylor polynomial for e to the x f of x about x equals zero. And if you look in the scoring guidelines, they use a pretty cool method where they take this part here, they just take these three terms and they multiply it by the polynomial we found in part A, but they stop everything at x to the second and combine like terms to get the answer. But I'm gonna show something a little bit different. I'm gonna let g of x equal e to the x times f of x. And if I want to write a second degree Taylor polynomial for this function about x equals zero, then what we need for this is we need to know g of zero plus g prime of zero x to the first plus g double prime of zero x to the second over two factorial. So this is just the general setup for our second degree Taylor polynomial at x equals zero. And to find g prime and g double prime, I'm just going to take the derivative of g of x. And I'm going to write this over here on the side. So g prime of x, I'm going to use the product rule. g prime of x 
is equal to the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. We have times f of x, and then I'll have plus e to the x times the de times the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. And I'll factor this so that the second derivative step is easier. We have e to the x times f of x plus f prime of x. Now for the next part here, we're going to take the second derivative, and g double prime of x is equal to the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And we're going to have f of x plus f prime of x. And now for this next part here, I have plus e to the x times the derivative of this factor is going to give us f prime of x, that's the derivative of f, plus f double prime of x. So then for this next part here, what I need to know is I have to know what is the value for g of 0, g prime of 0, and g double prime of 0. And if we just go down the line here, one by one, we could look g of 0, I would get just by plugging 0 into this, and I would have e to the 0 times f of 0. And remember from before, I took this with us, f of 0 is equal to 3. So I'd have 1 times 3, which is just equal to 3. So we already have one piece of the puzzle. Our second degree Taylor polynomial, g of 0 is 3. So our answer starts with a 3 here. Now, g prime of 0, we would get by plugging 0 into our first derivative. And we'd have e to the 0 times f of 0, we just said before, was equal to 3. And we'd have plus f prime of 0, and f prime of 0 is equal to negative 2. So we could just use these values that we had from before to help us answer this part. And now if we simplify this, this is 1 times 1, which is just going to be equal to 1. And then the last piece that we need to complete this is we need to know what g double prime of 0 is. And this one's the most complicated, but it's going to be e to the 0 times, and we're going to have f plus f prime. And f of 0 plus f prime of 0, that's going to give us 3 minus... Two. So once again, we're just using these values from before. f of 0 is 3, f prime of 0 is negative 2. And then for the last part here, what we have is we have plus e to the 0, so we're plugging in 0 again, and now we have f prime of 0, which was negative 2, plus the second derivative at 0, which is equal to 3. So when this simplifies, we have 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1, and that's just going to give us 2. So now we have all the other coefficients. So we're going to have plus g prime of 0 is 1. So we have 1 times x. And now here, g double prime of 0 is equal to 2. So I'd have 2x squared over 2 factorial, which is just 2. And our solution for this part is going to be 3 plus x plus x squared. So I just thought this was a nice alternate solution. Of course, you could use the same method in the scoring guidelines. but this is like a more direct approach to this question. For part C, they want us to use the polynomial we found in part A to find an approximation for h of 1. So what we're going to do here, we're saying that h of x is roughly equal to the integral from 0 to x, and we're going to replace f of t with our Taylor polynomial from part A. And we're going to have 3 minus, and instead of 2 times x, we're going to replace it with the variable t because we want f of t, not f of x. And the next part here, we would have plus 3 halves t squared. And then the last part, we have minus 23 over 12 times t to the third. And we just tack on this dt at the end. So if we want an approximation for h of 1, h of 1 is roughly equal to the integral from 0 to 1 now of everything that we have here. So we'll just rewrite this. So all we have to do to complete this question now is use the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, and we'll have an answer. So we'll start by taking the, so we have h of one is roughly equal to, and we have the antiderivative is three t minus, and we'll have two t squared over two, which is just gonna be t squared. And then we'll have plus three over two times t to the third over three. The dividing by three is gonna cancel out that three in the numerator, and we'll have one half t to the third, and we'll have minus 23, and we're going to have t to the fourth, and when we divide by 4, that's going to make this denominator into a 48. And we're evaluating this from 0 to 1. So now h of 1 
is approximately equal to, and when we plug in 1, we're going to have 3 minus 1 plus a half minus 23 over 48. And the nice thing is we're plugging in 0, so we'll have minus 0 from all of this at the end. And now here to close this out, what we're going to have is we have 3 minus 1 is 2, and 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. But I'm going to call 2 and a half 5 over 2. And then we'll just have the minus 23 over 48. So if we want to combine this into a single expression, just multiply this one here by 24 over 24. And we'll get 120 over 48 minus 23 over 48. And now we just do the subtraction. 120 minus 23 is 97. So our solution to this is going to be 97 over 48. So that's our approximation for h of 1. For part d, we want to use the alternating series error bound to show that the approximation we found in part c differs from h of 1 by at most 0 0.45. So the formula for the alternating series error bound is we have s minus s sub k is less than or equal to a sub k plus 1. Now it just helps to know this, but no, this is the actual sum. In this case, that's h of 1. This is the approximation, s sub k. So when you take the actual value minus the approximation, that difference is the error. And the alternating series error bound says that whatever that error is, it's less than or equal to the first unused term in your partial sum. So that's the big idea that we need for this question. So just know S sub K ends at plus or minus A sub K. So the first thing we don't use is A sub K plus one, the term right after A sub K. So in this question, think about, we found in the last question, an approximation for H of one, which was 97 over 48. So the actual value is H of one, but if we subtract the approximation, that's gonna be less than or equal to the first unused term in our partial sum. So if you think about the last question, remember, this is what we used. We went from 0 to 1. And our integrand here was 3 minus 2 times t plus 3 half t squared. And then we had minus 23 over 12 t to the third power dt. So if you look, the last term in this sum here was 23 over 12 t to the third. And that, if we think back to part A, came from this row. That was the last row that we used. So the first unused term, we would throw in this integral from 0 to 1. And that would come from the fourth derivative of f at 0 times t to the fourth over 4 factorial. Remember, in part A, they asked us to write a degree 3 Taylor polynomial centered at 0. So we stopped at the power 3. But the first unused term in our series would be the power 4 term. And this would be the entire thing, the fourth derivative at 0 times t to the fourth over 4 factorial. So now all we have to do is evaluate this. And this is the value that we finally get to use, that the fourth derivative at 0 is equal to 54. So now we have the integral from 0 to 1. We've got 54 times t to the fourth over 4 factorial. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. And now we have our dt here. So all we have to do is just simplify this now. And our antiderivative, we're going to have 54. And I'm going to leave the denominator alone for a moment. We have t to the fifth over 5. And when we do 24 times 5, that gives us 120. And now this is going from 0 to 1. So when we simplify this, just plug in. This is going to give us 54 over 120 times 1 minus 0 when we plug in. We have 1 to the 5th minus 0 to the 5th, which is just 1. So this is our true value here. And if we simplify this, we could divide the top and bottom here by 6. We're going to get 9 over 20. And now just to show that this differs by 0 0.45, if you multiply the top and bottom by 5, that's going to give you 45 over 100. And this is equal to 0 0.45. So we could say that the error here is less than or equal to the value of the first unused term. And the first unused term here is 0 0.45. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on question six of the 2019 Calc BC exam. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.